What do we need to do to get the UCS Blade Server benefits we discussed in our whiteboard drawing, UC on UCS, Benefits and Technologies? Cisco has provided two tested reference configurations for these servers. We'll start with B200M2 tested reference configuration number two. This configuration gives us all the benefits of VMware, the UCS environment, and SAN storage. And it would be more desirable to deploy than number one. With both configurations, we'll use a service profile with four vNICs alternately connected to the A and B sides. The service profile will have two VHBAs, one on the A side and the other on the B side. Both reference configurations specify dual E5640 four-core processors, so we have eight cores. Both configurations specify 48 gig of RAM, and both specify the Cisco VIC card. The UC application hard drives will live in the SAN for both configurations. We have no direct attached storage for configuration number two. The ESXi installs live in the SAN. For configuration number one, the ESXi installs live in two 146 gig SAS hard drives configured for RAID 1. Note that for both tested reference configurations, the service profile VNIC and VHBA configurations are not specified. For both tested reference configurations, we'll use a service profile with four VNICs alternately connected to the A and B side. We'll also have two VHBAs alternately connected to the A and B sides. As with the C210M2, we'll use two V switches. B200 M2 V switch and service profile configuration are related. V switch VM NICs attached to service profile VNICs. V switch 0 will have two VM NICs connected to service profile VNIC 0 and VNIC 1. VSwitch 1 will also have two VM NICs connected to service profile VNIC 2 and VNIC 3. We'll use VSwitch 0 for VM kernel traffic, for VMware management traffic, vMotion, and IP storage if we used it. If we want to use vMotion, the VLAN for this traffic must be the same across all of the servers. We'll use VSwitch 1 for our UC application traffic. Our UC apps can be attached to the vSwitch using a single port group, so all the apps are in the same VLAN. Or, if you prefer, you could use separate port groups, each with their own VLAN, and trunks to the upstream switches. For NIC teaming, we cannot use IP hash, as discussed in the whiteboard drawing, UCS switching for UC on UCS. So, we'll use vPort ID load balancing. Multipathing is enabled by default in the ESXi server. We should configure QoS for the vNICs. vNIC 0 and 1 are assigned 20% of the total bandwidth. vNICs 2 and 3, 40%, and VHBA 0 and 1 will also get 40% of the total bandwidth. vNIC 0 and 1 are in the best effort queue, vNICs 2 and 3 are in the platinum queue, and the VHBAs must be in the fiber channel queue. All of the B200 M2 tested reference configurations have dual E5640 4-core processors, so we have 8 cores. How many UC apps can we support on these 8 cores? Well, that depends. For our C210 M2 tested reference configurations, we used a customer with 4,000 users where the customer wanted telephony and voicemail with full redundancy. For the B200M2, we'll try a larger deployment. Here's a case study from Firefly's ICUCAV course. We have 20,000 users for both telephony and voicemail. We have 5,000 presence users. We need full redundancy, 10% concurrency for voicemail, and 3% concurrency for music on hold. Let's look at the UC on UCS OVA templates. This table indicates the numbers of users supported for a VM using each template. If we distribute our 20,000 CUCM users across three redundancy groups, then we need to use the 7,500 user template. That's because each VM in each redundancy group needs to be able to support almost 7,000 users. 
cluster will look like this. We have one publisher. We need redundant TFTP servers for a cluster of this size. Our first redundancy group has CUCM1A and CUCM1B. Our second has CUCM2A and CUCM2B, and the third CUCM3A and CUCM3B. We'll load balance 7,000 users across the call managers in each redundancy group. We'll need two music on hold servers. Each server supports 500 streams to support 600 unicast streams. All of the VMs in the cluster must use the same OVA. That means each VM will be allocated two vCPU, six gig of VRAM, and two 80 gig vDisks. Our total requirements are 22 vCPUs, 66 gig of VRAM, and 22 80 gig vDisks needing 1,760 gig of storage. For Unity Connection, a single high availability cluster using the 20,000 user template would support our users. For Unity Connection, we also need to consider how many voicemail ports are required. This table shows the relationship between Unity Connection OVAs and ports. We need 2,000 G711 ports, so that means we'll need 8 VMs using the 20,000 user OVA. We'll add four Unity Connection high availability clusters. Each cluster has two VMs and will support approximately 4,000 users, and each VM will support 250 ports. The clusters will need to be digitally networked. Each VM requires 7 vCPUs, 8 gig of RAM, and two 300 gig vDisks. We now need a total of 78 vCPUs, 130 gig of VRAM, and 2,560 gig of storage. Finally, we need to consider presence. For CUPS 8.5, we can have up to 15,000 users in a high availability cluster, and we have more users than this. If we deploy two presence clusters, we need two call manager clusters. That's not desirable at all. So we'll go with a single presence cluster with six presence servers, the maximum, each using the 5,000 user OVA. We'll distribute the users across these VMs, about 3,500 users per VM. Each VM needs four vCPUs, four gig of RAM, and two 80 gig vDisks. That brings our total to 102 vCPUs, 154 gig of VRAM and 3520 gig of storage.